Um, this will be a meeting of the Tennessee Utility Authority Board of Trustees. Roll call. Cliff. Here. Kurt. Here. Harold. Here. Richard. Here. Item two is consider approval of the consent agenda, minutes of meetings, approval of claims as follows, January purchase orders 5714.84, February purchase order 73,044.05, February meter deposit refund $700, and the treasurer's report. Is there any additions or corrections to the consent agenda? If not, I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Second. Roll call, please. Cliff. Yes. Harold. Yes. <laughs> Bert. Yes. Richard. Please. Here. Yes. Okay. Susan's comments. Anybody got anything on the utility agenda to comment about? Okay. If not, other scheduled business. Discuss, accept, approve, deny, reject, and or take action on the following. Item A is discussion of possible action to adopt the new employee handbook. If you read the uh, town administrator's report, the attorney would like to uh, go over that again. So Tiffany has recommended that we table that, correct? Yes. So we will table item A. Item B's discussion with possible action to approve bid on new sewer line for Osborne Edition as presented by Town Engineering. Good evening, Board. Um, we have presented you with the bid tab in your packet and a recommendation to the low bidder. Um, it did come in over budget. We're experiencing that right now with the supply demand issues as well as labor issues everything's coming in much higher than anticipated but um, as far as the bid goes we recommended the low bidder to um, meet competitive bid act rules um, if it's out of bid or budget at this time we do have some options uh, we could go back out for bid and reject all bids and see if they come in better or if there's capacity to do the project in-house, we could recommend that as well. Um, with that, we're here to just ask any or answer any questions or um, thoughts that you guys might have. Um, I have um, I have called around on the pipe today. Um, Right now, I have found it at 21.70 a foot. Um, I have spoke with our employees. I've spoke with the engineers. Um, they think, I didn't get, we're still waiting on estimates for the manholes. Um, but after talking with the employees, they think it may take um, a few, a couple weeks to three weeks. That's um, um, but they think that they can do it as long as maybe Jay. Mm -hmm. Could you in the back there do the clearing and level that for us? <clears throat> it's going to be done in a couple of days. So, um, but we're not quite sure. Um, I will know in the morning exactly how long it's going to take us to get. It. The pipe. Um, okay. We're waiting to hear back exactly how long it will take. Which would probably still be a bit of an issue if we were ordered to the, the low bidder. They're still going to have to order it. We'll get contracts. Um, so, I mean, we'll run into some time delays for those materials, but uh, I don't think it'd be any delays that any other person wouldn't have. But I've talked to the engineers. They're willing to come out and shoot it, um, give us. Um, the levels um, come out and help us anytime we need help. Um, we will, yeah, we'll provide inspection and, and guidance okay. just like we would on any normal construction project. Do you have any type of estimated costs if we go that route? I, because I don't know the manholes yet. Okay. Um, I know to get the excavator, it's going to cost us 
about twenty five hundred dollars for three weeks. Okay. Um, because ours will not work. We have to until we get our new one in, and that's going to be about May. Mm -hmm. Um, and then. Um, when we figure in about twenty five hundred for per man. That's fair enough. I was thinking twenty five hundred, yeah. but I wasn't sure. You know, I don't know what the new cost is. I don't. Is there four of them or five of them? We're going to do four. Um, yeah, I think got five on here. I think there was one we found that that possibly could be deleted. Um, the one in the street, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So yes. Probably about twenty two thousand for the, the pipe, and then another ten thousand, twelve thousand five for manholes, and then twenty five hundred for the uh, excavator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we will have some dirt um, that we'll need to place mm -hmm. uh, for cleaning up the back slope there. But don't we have our own dirt? We do have some topsoil. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That we have taken off from places. Yeah, are we going to be. I thought Jay said he would do that. Do well, we, he's clearing the trees. labeling and. No, they're all that There's that mine trees. trees. Right. And K and Z did the site work for the. Park stop, they're going to come in and start at the south end, clear those trees anyway. Okay. All the way along, because that's the way it needs to go. Because didn't I see on the site plan that that these guys were thinking they were going to come across the street? Yeah, that originally, and then I think we found another location we can tie in at. Okay. Okay. And then there will be some um, testing that we'll have to do. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but over there where we used to bust up concrete, there were several manholes over there that were stocked. Um, they're not, um, they're not, there they're not the proper manholes. So after talking with David Fuchs at one point, they're not the proper manholes. I did a quick look online and I saw manholes for 1600 but there again. So we've they, got a, they may not have them. <laughs> no, they've, they've got it. Just, that's like, you've been to Amarillo, Texas, you drive by right, a place right there by Amarillo, and they sell them wholesale, but I don't know what they cost to have them delivered. I don't know if they're the right spec, because the manhole up there on Arapaho is going to be, that one's going to be eight foot deep. Yeah, we'll have to have uh, invert set as well as um, height, so they'll be made to order for the most part. Because yeah. the way I count that, it looks like it'd be three manholes. But There's three on the back side, and then there's one that we're going to read. But we wouldn't have to put Hester's. one. Well, I, I defer to that because I was counting on one somewhere right about in the middle and one at the corner, and then maybe one at the end of the alley because I didn't think there'd be one at the north end because there wasn't a reason for it, unless the, the sewer line has to bend. Well, I think uh, we might have hit the, the length requirement for DEQ on there. But so if it's just right over, you got to drop it. So there has to be another manhole, manhole for venting, I'm assuming. Because you can't feed the house in the end of the line when it's going to go 200 feet. Right. So that would be four. Yeah, we're going to do four. There's one already there, but it's broken up, and so <clears throat> we're going to replace it while we're in there. Remember that I dropped the one? Probably around forty thousand to sixty thousand if we do it in half. We were like, I mean, I was guesstimating around fifty thousand, so give or take. I mean, not counting our labor. What are your thoughts on us doing it in the house? Um, if your staff feels that they have the capability and time, I'm I'm sure that they're fully capable of doing it because they work on the system on a day-to-day -day basis and they have all their certifications for this. Um, so my main concern was time. As long as they feel like they have the time, I think we're okay. My, my biggest concern was equipment. If we had the course of digging equipment, we would bring out the excavating equipment, but mm -hmm. also the equipment to be able to, to shoot the proper slopes and things for that. So that's what you're coming for, right? So that we're that's, what, with, that's what we were talking right. about, is doing offsets for them, uh -huh. so there's stakes with information, and then um, any guidance that they need. 
You mentioned the word certifications. What are we talking Just about? Just operator certification. Most of like the operators their, already have DEQ certification. Like their water and sewer operate, operator certificates? Uh -huh. Like they have D and C and B water and sewer certifications. And that allows it mm -hmm. to, to work on our systems. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had to take tests through the state to get those certifications. I see. Well, considering the, I don't know where $237,000 is going to come from, if we took Well, we did get it down to 186 Okay. Um, take removing the water out of this because our workers have already done the water and removing one of the manholes okay. and um, changing it from boring to, to trenching. They, the engineers have got it down to 186. And now we, we have to award it that and then execute a change order. Right. And the contractor was amenable to that. Um, so. Okay. But still, us doing it at you know, around fifty, sixty thousand versus one hundred eighty-six. Oh, yeah. I mean, a third. Yeah. Right. And then labor's usually uh, one and a half, two times for them, times materials. So. Do we even have funds to accept the contract? Well, we wouldn't accept the contract. Mm -hmm. uh, we would. What's your thoughts? I don't want to on this. Uh, first of all, that's what I want to say is Tiffany, thanks for taking the time out doing this today. I think we ought to do it in-house. You know, worst, worst case scenario, we have to go get some outside help maybe with the equipment. We still come in way under this. So, uh, we got people in town that would help us, you know. Uh, so, we all know that. So, uh, And what. this is actually, I talked with... Um, Boney, and I spoke with Alyssa, and I spoke with David Trainer, and all three of them have, well, Alyssa has her B water, but all three of them have C wastewater licenses, and they all three thought that they could do it. Because I mean, my deal is, is uh, if we can do this in house, then the project that we got going on north, we can spend more funds. That. I would like to do it in-house if possible because that would be experience that we could really use on down the road because we've got a lot of sewer re replacement we need to do. And so you said we're going to provide the, the labor, Jay's going to provide the pipe, correct? What? <laughs> you shook your head, yes. <laughs> Did you get that on camera that he nodded? <laughs> Some minutes. We're going to use that same stockpile that was used when Tom Smith did it nearly 40 years ago. <laughs> How's that, <laughs> Bruno? <laughs> that famine pipe. Yeah. Well, if that's the consensus, then as, as a, a board, you would reject all bids and... Okay. Does that mean you're going to move to approve doing it in-house? Now, those of us that remember, Hennessy used to do everything in-house. We even blacktop streets here. Yeah. Jay, we're really trying. The workers are really trying to do more and more. I was just, that was an observation about. Yeah, you know, we used to have our own trash trucks even. I, I know. <laughs> Back in the day. We well, had an asphalt. A roller too, too. We had a roller and we had an asphalt lay down machine. All that stuff. I'm going to move to reject all bids on the sewer line for the Osborne edition. Second. Roll call, please. Bert? Yes. Harold? Yes. Cliff? Yes. Richard? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and 
explaining that. <coughs> Okay, any new business? Citizen comments? Council person reports? Richard, you got anything on the utility? The election has to be certified by the county election board. Okay. There's a protest period mm -hmm. that ends tomorrow. So, if I'm correct, any time after tomorrow. Yeah, they have a meeting at 5 p.m. tomorrow, and I think that that's when they do the certification. Okay. Yeah, I think in your notes, you said you might call a short term meeting or something in your notes. Yes. So, David could be sworn in at that time. Yes. He will at our next board meeting. Harold, you got anything on utilities? No, sir. Cliff? No, sir. I don't need it. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. Cliff? Yes. Harold? Yes. Bert? Yes. Richard? Yes. Okay, this will be a meeting of the Town of Hennessy Board of Trustees. February 10th. Roll call, please. Cliff? Here. Bert. Here. Harold. Here. Richard. Here. <coughs> Item 2 is report from the Hennessy United Board. Bart. I'm trying to remember what we did last month. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, we did a consider approval of consent agenda minutes of the January meetings approval of claims as follows January purchase orders 17,813.46 February purchase orders 12,498.55 February restricted sales tax fund 22,354.09 February library fund 1,319.56 February cemetery fund 1,296 February Street and Alley Fund 4517 and accept the following reports Treasurer's Library and Police. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, I'll make a motion to accept the consent agenda. Second. Roll call. Cliff. Yes. Harold. Yes. Bert. <coughs> yes. Richard? Yes. Okay, item four, citizens' comments. There you go. Uh, it's that time of year again. Last year we did the, the car show. If you guys remembered that, we had uh, a little over 4,000 people got it came to town, over 1,300 cars. Seemed like a success to me. So I was hoping it was kind of a success for everybody. <laughs> We're going to do it again this year. Uh, April 24th is going to be the date. Uh, I'm trying to get a lot of the things set up. I've gotten with uh, town manager and kind of going over everything that's, you know, what we're trying to plan this year. Of course, this year we're going to kind of do the same things we did last year with the dyno competition, the burnout competition, uh, of course, the cruising. We're going to have some uh, drone racing uh, uh, up by uh, Luke's place instead of the, the motocross area. Uh, we're even going to have RC car racing. And then uh, up in the new addition, I've already talked with Scotty since it's going to be private property, we're going to be doing 
uh, ATV, UTV barrel racing up there, uh, which is a huge crowd drawer. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's, it's a load of fun. And then, of course, uh, that new street up there, he's going, since it won't be on the town side yet, we're going to try to do some drifting up there. Uh, of course, we'll have, you know, uh, liability waivers and whatnot for anything that can cause any type of issues. Uh, people will sign those. But uh, I wanted to kind of get in front of you guys, and uh, we've, I've gotten with her on, you know, looking at shutting down the, the highway to two lanes this year. Uh, we had some concerns last year that I, had, I brought up to myself, uh, is that, 25 miles an hour, yeah, in a neighborhood and things like that, it, it seems slow enough, but when you start getting that many people packed in that small of an area, 25 mile an hour was just way too fast. Uh, we had a couple kids that, you know, ran out in traffic and, you know, as a, as a parent myself, I was like, that's not a good thing. So we're looking at trying to drop the, I think she said she was going to get with ODOT about dropping the speed limit uh, during that time down to 15 miles an hour through town. Uh, that way it, it, People slow down, it'll choke down the traffic, and we're trying to get all the cars on the main street uh, this year instead of having them in spread throughout the neighborhoods and whatnot. Uh, another concern I had last year, of course, was with the burnout contest. Uh, we had some you know, extremely high-powered cars over there. It was a great time, but we had some people that decided that they were gonna try to get that best shot and get out in front of some of these cars. It, once again, the parent side of me came out, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Not a good thing. So I've been getting with uh, Ray Shamanic. Uh, we're gonna see about trying to get some concrete barriers this year. And then lining the side to where people aren't passing in front of these cars during the, the, the event. Uh, I'm also gonna get with Ray and I'm gonna try to get with the school and see if we can get some uh, mobile bleachers out in some of these areas. So that way people aren't trying to get over and get that shot. They can get up into the bleachers and actually see the event that's going on. Um, those are just some of the concerns that I know we had, or I had at least last year, that we're wanting to, to try to, to curve this year. Uh, of course, we all want to have a safe, fun time, but I also wanted to get in front of you guys and say, hey, look, I'd like to get your guys' blessing again. I know I've asked for, for this year a couple more porta potties, and then especially trash receptacles. Uh, the guys last year, one of the big things we do is when we go into these towns, we don't want to trash them out. We don't want to, we want to leave it better than we left. Uh, we want to pour money into these small community uh, communities and, and boost their economy. But uh, last year we had an issue where they didn't have a place to put enough trash. We ha our, our trash receptacles were overflowing. Uh, I mean, the trash was around the trash can, but <laughs> it, yeah, you just couldn't get it in there anymore. They just, they just filled it up. And, you know, it was nice enough to see our restaurants, you know, actually have a wait time. You know, a lot of the, the, the restaurant owners, I've talked to just about every restaurant owner and every mercantile, and they are all on board for this again this year. Uh, I am getting with uh, Jack and all about Hennessy. Uh, we are going to be making a QR code this year. Instead of handing out a bunch of flyers and wasting paper, we're actually making a QR code to where it'll have all the restaurants and all the events and times and their, their, uh, what they're serving that day and the cost. So that way it's a little bit more that the town can use in a later aspect, like when I uh, heard the wine and chocolate festival, you know, maybe you know, they, could, they can piggyback off that, the, the QR code, it's automatically on their site, it's something that, you know, we're doing, the, the restaurants are all paying uh, 10 bucks to help get this built up. So this is kind of something that, you know, we're trying to do as the car show side of it to, to bring a little bit more value to the town. Um, but I guess my big thing is I want to know if any concerns that you guys saw last year that we can try to correct or try to, to curve or, or if you guys saw something that you guys want to try. Uh, I know the helicopter was a huge success last year. Everybody seemed to love that one. Uh, in fact, that, that gentleman was flying until his, fl his flight time ended at 8.45. That man went, had a line out the door. Uh, he is coming back again this year. <laughs> Obviously, he is, yeah. yeah, he is coming back. I, I know she said she had to get with, uh, uh, she has to pr produce a letter for the LZ so that way they have it on file so that they can use that as an LZ in between the library and the uh, gym. old gym. Uh, the flag makes a great uh, point there so that way he can see the windage and everything else. Uh, he loved he loved that LZ and it was able, they were able to control the LZ and entrance and exiting from it. So it was kind of nice. Uh, I know we had one or two complaints about people noise complaints. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we're, we try to put this out as far out as possible. 
So that way people know that Sunday it's probably going to get a little loud. Uh, the decibel competition is coming back again this year. Uh, USAC loved it. Uh, they, they said it for a first time show that this was the best they'd ever seen. So they're wanting to come back and do the decibel competition. Kickers wanting to come in and kick some, you know, sponsorship on that. Deutsche Works is, you know, sponsoring some of the stuff. So we're actually having some of the local and larger companies come in and throw sponsorships at us already. So it's, it's growing. Uh, and this is one of the things that I'm hoping that will put Hennessy back on the map for things. You know, this, is, this shows that Hennessy can host something like this and host something large. And I'm hoping this grows just not only to a car show, that, but different you know, items that we can host. I mean, we have the grounds to do things. We have the grounds to, to, to host different things and bring people in. That's like we built this dome over here. You know, it, it's helped out the restaurants a little bit, bringing tournaments and stuff like that in. Uh, I just think that, you know, as a town, you know, us growing is a great thing. And I'd like to see, you know, more things happen here draw more people to want to live here so and that's that's kind of one of our it's kind of my my goal i mean i live here i, I work here and you know i just want to show the community but as a town of the trustees i'd like to know if there's anything that you guys saw that possibly that we could look at changing any things you guys want to see um any concerns can i get your blessing <laughs> say your leader, it's, it's not on the agenda for us to take a vote but yeah me personally, I am all in favor, but I love cars to start with, so oh, yeah. that helps. <laughs> but it, it was a great event for Hennessy. It was a great event. And I'm thinking, what what can we do to help? Um, well, right can now, we put like the small dumpsters maybe at the well, end of the Well, and I'm going to, I'm, I've got a list of stuff that I'm going to do to what help about, you. I'm going to get porta potties. I'm going to get trash receptacles. Um, we're going to get extra patrol. We're going to. I'm going to work on the lane closures for him. Um, I got to get the helicopter. Um, there, I will get the zone. Yeah, yeah um, I'm going to help him try to find some bleachers for there. I'm going to help him try to find some. Um, on. Uh, yeah, I've got me a whole <laughs> list here. Um, Are any of our I got to get a hold of. Uh, um, I'm going to try to find some barricades for him for the lane closures. I think you said we were talking maybe Kingfisher. Kingfisher. Um, so there's a lot of stuff that I didn't feel like we had to have like board approval. It's just sure. that I, I asked him to come and, you know, to me, there's a lot of people that watch our board meetings now online. And so to me, this was a, a plug in and to also notify you guys um, of what's going on also. So, um, but, and also get you guys' input. Yeah. Would and there so, be any feasibility in routing Highway 81 around uh, on that Sunday since it's not a school day? And I'm going to talk to ODOT about that. And I told him I think ODOT may also help us with the, um, the routing of traffic. Okay. I just have to get, in, get into them and... Um, I think you said on Sundays we can't have wide loads anyway. They can't. They can't do right. the wide loads on Sundays, <clears throat> or they used to not be able to. I right. don't know, but I'm pretty sure that they can't do that. I, I'm just saying most of the truck traffic, if we could reroute and stuff, but it. Yeah. Because what are you talking? What time will that start? Uh, what did you tell me? You oh, told me about noon to noon. six. Yeah, I would say about noon to six. Um, yeah. I know last year. I think <laughs> we said about noon last year. And I know the Viper Club ended up showing up around like 10 a.m. We had a bunch of guys from Tulsa showing up. About we, had, I think we had cars actually starting to show up about 9 o'clock in the morning. And I would say by noon, we already had at least a couple hundred cars here in town. And that wasn't even the main uh, cruise that was coming in. Uh, we usually, when I plan the cruise uh, for the April, uh, we start in Yukon and we take Route 66. In, the route can change, uh, and of course, because that's you know it's based on what police escorts we can get, what type of help we can get from the county, because when you start getting four, five, six, eight, nine hundred cars cruising, we can congest up towns extremely fast. So what we do is we get with Kingfisher County, Kingfisher Town, and have them uh, block off and just have us go straight through, straight through the lights and whatnot. Otherwise, you start getting that many cars going through and having to stop at a light you're gonna have a mile to two mile backup real fast. 
So it, it, it really, that cruise, which should come in, the main body of it should be around noon. Uh, we won't start a lot of the events until about one o'clock. I'm hoping to get more volunteers this year. Uh, that was something that hindered me a lot last year. Uh, if a lot of the people saw me at you know, almost midnight, one o'clock the night before, out putting up barricades and getting things ready, and then I was back up here at, by five o'clock in the morning, still setting up. Uh, so that's one thing I'm hoping to find this year is more volunteers to help me out. Uh, the more volunteers I can get, of course, the, the better things can be. Uh, I can make sure things kind of run without a hitch that way. And, and a lot of the volunteers just are helping run some of the events, just basically saying, okay, you know, we're doing a 10 second burnout, have them count out 10 seconds and blow the horn and that's it. Some of the volunteers, it's, it's just real simple stuff. Um, so I'm really hoping that we can get some more volunteers this year. Uh, I'll be putting out, I'm getting with Tinker Air Force Base and Vance Air Force Base, uh, being that a lot of, you know, uh, the Navy, I know especially, they have to have community service hours to help get them the rank. So we're going to be running this through the CAT team and Hennessy United, so that way they can get letters of appreciation for their volunteer hours, and that helps them with getting their rank. Uh, and then, of course, we'll be getting with local businesses and whatnot, uh, OFO companies or anything else, about getting donations. And, of course, those will be written off through uh, Hennessy United as a donation. And that way we can help try to get the band and, and pay for some of the things that we need to get taken care of. Uh, but this year, like I said, my biggest thing is I, I want to get it bigger. Uh, I want to bring more, more people to town. Uh, we had a huge influx of income last year just in that six hours. So, like I said, if, if there's anything you guys like to see that's within our power, let's, you know, let's kind of do it. Uh, she's helping me as much as we can with, you know, trash receptacles, trying to, you know, source different items that we need. Uh, if there are companies out there, I'm going to be trying to get, you know, get with other companies out here, with construction companies, if they have barricades and whatnot that we can use. I mean, those will all be definitely put to use. Uh, so... Uh, like I said, any concerns or anything along that nature, I'd, I'd love to know. Uh, one thing I know is I'd like to get with the fire department, see if we can get the old fire truck out there. I'm trying to get with uh, like John Deere and whatnot and get some of the big equipment out there just set up on Main Street so kids can look at it. I'm trying to make grow the kids area. That was something people loved last year is that they came in and they said they felt completely safe about leaving their kid in the kids area that had bouncy houses and an art bus and, and whatnot because the kids were entertained. And they could go over and have a nice meal over at Family Cafe or go down to uh, Gail's, Gail's Grill and have you know, a nice meal. And they weren't worried about what their kid was doing because they, they had good times. And we're trying to get some of the bigger equipment. I'd like to see if we can get the police department. I've talked with Ed, unfortunately, now that you know, he's resigning. Uh, I'll have to talk to whoever is running the police department at that time and uh, see if we can get maybe a cruiser over there. People, you know, kids love these type of things. Uh, you know, another thing that we spoke about is being able to get to where uh, the police department is more mobile. Uh, that many people, a cruiser isn't going to be, it, it's not, it's not going to work very well. You start getting 4,000 people shoved in a small town that, you know, we only have a 2,000 to 2,100 populace. A cruiser's not going to get very, very far very fast. So I'm going to try to get with local businesses about letting the police department use uh, UTVs. Uh, so that way it kind of doesn't hinder our police department and they can actually have a nice presence in town. Uh, that was something that was, you know, everybody loved is that the police department had a great presence last year. They were extremely professional and I got so many compliments on our police department. So that's something that we're going to try to do it again. So if we have uh, companies that you guys know of that could help with the police department getting in, into UTVs for that day, that'd be awesome. Or if, if the, the town would even, you know, if we have a UTV that they could, they could use, such as a, with light bars. So. You shut the traffic down and we can get the traffic shut down. How would you cruise the cars? Cruise the car, well. There would still be two lanes. <laughs> there's still yeah, there's two lanes. Somewhere you gotta turn around. Well, and, and that's where, you know, people will turn around up here. They'll usually turn up around like Golden Chick or they'll turn around up at the, the truck stop. Well. The cruise itself is just cruising to Hennessy. Uh, and that's the reason we're shutting down those two lanes because they all like to park. Uh, I, like last year, yeah, driving back and forth. Well, that, that started happening. Uh, I, you know, I got compliments last year of like, we haven't seen people cruise Sunday on, in Hennessy for years. 
And that was kind of one of those kind of neat things is that we had high school kids cruising until like nine o'clock. Well, by nine o'clock and stuff like that, a lot of the guys are gone. Uh, our guys usually come in, we don't do a whole lot of cruising, we just do a lot of sitting and then we, we'll do the events. Uh, so the cruising really in itself will be kind of minimal in town until the, 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 the event starts winding down. And that's when a lot of people like to just drag Maine. And then that's when we'll go ahead and when we start winding down, we'll pull the barricades back and then we'll open up the, the highway. Uh, but in the generality of cruising during the, the, the main portion of the event, it's, it's not a whole lot. Uh, a lot of people like to sit, look, talk about cars, go to the events, watch people do burnouts, things along that nature. So, uh, but yes, when it starts winding down, we will open back up the lanes. I enjoy it. I'm a period. Yeah. Well. <laughs> well, I mean, I look at it this way. Yeah. Pretty much all four of you, you know, yeah, love right. cars. So. <laughs> One problem that me with some of the time with the traffic. Actually, looking at the car and the way they were parked, you get out in the street and look at the front end. And you got to worry about somebody running over your feet. Well, and that's the reason we're going to have try to we're going to have try to get people out there and we're going to angle the cars. They're not going to be parked completely parallel. They're not going to completely you know parked nose out towards the street. We're actually going to get them angled, so that way there is some buffer space between the front of the car and the lane that's open. So last year we had a little bit of room there and it was great. But we didn't shut down those lanes, and that's what kind of spurred when I, you know, when I saw the kid jump out in front of a vehicle, I was like, whoa, 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 we need to to really kind of think about this next year. So, like I said, there's some safety concerns that I'm wanting to 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 address, and I'm trying to get with the appropriate, you know, authorities to get that taken care of. But the other thing I, think, uh, that I thought maybe we need to be addressed a little bit is. Is actually for a place for people to sit down and eat up in that area. Oh, like the park or? Well, like the picnic tables, you know. That's uh, something I'd like to get with Hennessy United yeah. and use the uh, like the picnic tables. I have a big 40 by 60 tent. If it looks to be a really hot sunny day, I'll, I'll throw it down at the, the park if need be. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, in all honesty, that's, I think that's, we haven't decided where we're going to put the band again this year, if it's going to be out in the park or if it's going to be at Bernost. It would be nice to so. have one kind of spread out because the dad wanted to stay in the action. But <laughs> the action again. Well, the action this year will actually pretty much be all of town. Uh, Scotty Hike has talked about uh, uh, donating some time and, and vehicles to kind of do transport. I guess he's got some like the limo and the, the van oh. type thing. <laughs> yeah, with horns. Yeah. <laughs> He's talking about doing a like a trolley all up and down town, which we'll have marked with flags and whatnot as like different stops, uh, and that's something that we're we're looking into because we're going to have events spread from basically the library all the way up to the the new edition. So it is when I say this is going to be a town wide event, we really mean this is going to be a full town wide event. So, but. Like the last year's, can't wait. Can't wait. Well. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can't wait to see the hearse. That's that was a that I love. People love that one. <laughs> so. Tony, I was a first grader in 1952. I've never seen the streets of Tennessee as busy as I the 50s as when you held your event. I never saw have seen that many people on Main Street. Well I'm hoping to blow that number out of the water again. So <laughs> well I'm hoping this, to blow that even bigger. This so. event is occurring primarily because of you. It's not the cruiser club. It's not the cruiser club that's doing this, is that correct? I'm, I'm just coordinating curious. this event. Uh cruise in Oklahoma we are a we're basically a, kind of a club of people that have all the same mindset. You know, we have cars that range from the mom and dad minivan all the way up to 2,000 horsepower Supras. You know, we're a collective people that have the same mindset and that we like to talk. Uh, I'm but trying to, I'm trying to thank you. Oh. <laughs> it's not the cruise club that said we select Tennessee. It's you yeah. that's doing this. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm the one that selected Hennessy. I was the one that, yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, it's, it's, we all live here. You know, the businesses need help. The, a lot of the businesses are hurting right now. You know, if this is something that can, you know, be the difference between a, a restaurant keeping its doors open or closing or a, a kid going to college. 
you know, it's, it's worth the time and the effort to do it. And, you know, I live here. I'd love to see this community grow. It, uh, so. It made me very proud of our community to go on the cruise in Oklahoma's Facebook page after they've been to Hennessy and read all the comments mm -hmm. because they all seem to really love being here and we loved them being here and so looking looking forward to like you said bigger and better even so let's do it let's do it Tony, I'm not a car person, but even I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people enjoyed your little uh, Airbnb. They liked, they liked what they saw in it. They thought that, they thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> so, but thank you, guys. Thanks, thank Tony. You, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Okay, item five, town administrator's report. Tiffany. Um, I just um want to tell you that. Uh, at the planning meeting, I said that Ed had resigned as police chief. Um, I'm going to advertise that. Um, well, first of all, Aaron is going to be interim because we do have to have, we have to immediately have a police chief. So Aaron is going to serve as interim. I'm going to um, post it in-house to see if there's anyone interested um, in-house before I start advertising out-house. So just so you know that. Um, also, I've hired Melissa Macy as the accounts um, accounts payable clerk. She will start on the 22nd. Um, also, um, we know the handbook. We will be bringing it um, at the March meeting. If you don't have a copy, you haven't reviewed it, please let me know. I will send you another one. Um, but please review that before the March meeting. If you have any changes you want, please let me know. The REAP waterline project, I think I put in there that there's just some well, minor... Clean up. It's substantially complete. The water is all connected and running, but there's still just uh, site cleanup and, and they have some concrete that the weather's not allowed them to place. I think we'll be doing a final next week. Okay. And once they get that, then if we can get that, then we'll have a special meeting to close it out because I know NOTA wants us to close it out as soon as possible. Yep. So, okay. um, and then the CDBG grant stuff, it's doing March. We'll be submitting in the next week for okay. the report, for the application. Okay, so that's where we're at with the CDBG stuff. That's submitting the grant proposal? Yes. <coughs> that's for the phase two of the, the drainage. Mm -hmm. So that's over there by Barb's house. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And then I just, um, I want you guys to know that I have truly tried to get the employees the past two years to be team players. And I feel like the employees have really come together and become team players. I mean, they all, on a project, they all dive in together, just like when I asked them about this sewer project. I mean, they were all coming together um, said, yeah, we can do that. I mean, so I feel like the employees together have become team players. Now I would like the board as a whole to please come together as team players because they have to see you guys as a team in order for them to act as a team. So I've been seeing some stuff on social media that I feel like is not is not being a good example of the board being a team and so to me i would really like for you guys because i think that our employees need to see it from the top so but anyway that's my town administrator report so if you have any questions please come to me and i agree with you Other scheduled business, discuss, approve, deny, reject, or and or take action on the following. Item A, again, will be tabled. That's the employee handbook. Item B is discuss discussion with possible action on sales tax Tennessee versus Kingfisher and Richard. Well, I'm kind of beating the same old horse again, but we had that excellent planning committee with many excellent proposals. And 
as you look at all these proposals, the question comes, well, why haven't we done this before? Well, it all goes back to a question of having money for it. And uh, so I would like to go through this again. I've done it before, but I want to do it again. I didn't get these out in time. your paper publishes this monthly and we can see that Kingfisher, Hennessy and Cashin went up. You see Kingfisher's sales tax went up uh, to $542, Hennessy $124,590. Now that $124,590 is a big jump. Um, In December, we got $100,352 in sales tax. In November, $105,848 in sales tax. In October and September, we had big jumps. September was $129,000 almost, and October was $120,000. We don't have those days, but I got it missed here. So if you go to the second page, you can see the difference between Kingfisher and Hennessy. I took Kingfisher sales tax, divided it by the number of their citizens, and you can see they co they're collecting $102 per citizen. Then there's Hennessy. We collected $124,590 divided by 2,197 citizens. I'm using the census uh, numbers for uh, 2021. That comes out to $56.71. So Kingfisher collects 81% more in sales tax per citizen than Hennessy. And the point I would make to the general public here in Hennessy is that when we pay the street or buy a vehicle for the utility department or a police car or anything, we have to pay the same price as a Kingfisher, but they've got twice the money. Um, the the solution, if we're going to do all these things that we're at the planning committee, we have to put a good emphasis on grants, which Tiffany is doing. We've gotten three grants in the last two years for 265000 I want to go through this endowed legacy giving thing again. Okay. Yeah, that's the next agenda. Yeah, oh, okay, I can't jump. <laughs> okay, I'm finished, Bert. What? Um, let's, right. let's talk about the sales. I mean, what you've got the figures here, and I understand that that they have more per capita. But what can we do about that? What can we do? Because uh, I'm looking at Kingfisher as having a Walmart, an Atwoods, three car dealerships, a, a McDonald's, a Brahms, Pioneer. And Pioneer is the huge one because, and I, and, I, and I look at this number that they jumped from 338 to 506,000, and immediately I thought, I wonder if Pioneer Telephone bought a bunch of new equipment. Because every time they buy all this expensive technology equipment, Kingfisher gets the sales tax money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that being said, I don't think it's so much a per capita or our population issue as it is that they just have these businesses like Walmart and Atwoods that people drive in to shop at that we don't have that luxury of habit. Well, that's the point I want to make. Okay. So we're never going to have the money that Kingfisher has. So we have to rely on grants and legacy giving to 
do some of the things that were discussed at the planning committee, and that's why I brought this in. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm assuming it ties in with your next agenda items. So. Yeah, it ties, it does. And so, because and, in pushing, well, I guess you got to introduce it to be legal. Well, you can combine the two. Yeah, I mean, we can combine. Let's just do that, Richard. Okay. Go ahead and combine, and okay. we'll cover B and C in one. Okay. So, in pushing this legacy program, one of the things I would push is the sales tax collection thing. We just don't have the financial resources, and we'll never have the financial resources to do things that, like Kingfisher. I always use two towns for my markers, Kingfisher and Marshall. <laughs> Marshall's disappeared off the map. Used to be a lovely little town, very active. It's gone. And I have these nightmares that maybe something will happen to Hennessy. And then I look at Kingfisher and, and, and what they're doing. But I want to go through this legacy giving thing because I don't believe it's still fully understood. Uh, it's something uh, I think some people fully understand, and it, but I think probably the majority of people in Hennessy don't understand. Let's go to number one. Is that... Is that another handout? Oh, I better get my handout. <laughs> 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 title, The Awesome Power of Endowed Legacy Giving, that's not to dismiss grants. Uh, grants are very uh, powerful too, but there is a difference. Item one, when you have an endowed legacy fund, you can use it to support current expenses. You cannot get, grants are not available for current expenses. Grants generally are for capital expenditures. Now, what can I ask you? What are you, what are you calling current expenses? Salaries, gas, tires, okay. parks, cemetery fund. Two, endowed funds are established forever. With a grant, you have to submit it each year or every two years or whatever. But once that endowed fund is established, it's there. So if you have an endowed fund, let's say supporting the cemetery and all the money that goes into the cemetery, then that's not a concern in your future budget planning. Three, it reaches out to Hennessy supporters beyond the city limits. And uh, I think that the Medford, that museum, the, the, the two people that pushed it were, live in Oklahoma City, I believe. I knew they were out of town. What's that? The Medford Museum. Yeah. They were. They lived in Oklahoma City. Yeah, well, one of them lived in Wichita, and one of them lived in. Uh, mm -hmm. They moved to Oklahoma yeah. City after it was done. It's my belief <clears throat> that when a person is raised in a, especially in a small <clears throat> town, that, that mentally they never, they never leave that town. Physically, they may be gone, but mentally they're still tied to their hometown. So when you, if you try to do it. A project with property taxes, you're, I mean, uh, within the city limits, you're limited to that sales tax and to the citizens that are spending that money to generate the sales tax. But with the endowed legacy giving, you can reach beyond the city limits. Four, it can be used to obtain grants. Kingfisher is pretty good at this and all that flood control work they did. If you have, so let's say you have a $500,000 endowed fund for parks. 500000 or you, both the Cherokee Strip Community Foundation in Enid and the Community Foundation in Oklahoma City, they both have a 5% return. 
So if you have a $500,000 gift for parks, you automatically earn $25,000 a year. Community Foundation uh, of Oklahoma will match it by 5%, so they'll throw in another $25,000. So at the end of the first year, you have $50,000. You can take that $50,000 and spend it, or you can take that $50,000 and use it to get a grant. When you go for the grant, they generally require a 20 to 25% contribution by the person requesting the grant. Now, it can be in kind. It, it, where, for example, in Hennessy, where we would provide a backhoe or uh, workers to do the project. But that's, another, that's something you can't use a grant to get another grant. Five, it can be accumulated. When you have an endowed fund, you don't have to spend the money. Say you've got a $200,000 project or a $100,000 project and your endowed fund is in producing $25,000 a year. You don't have to spend that $25,000. You can save it and accumulate it till you get to your $100,000 goal and then you can use it. And number six, you receive a 5% match from the Communities Foundation of Oklahoma. The Community Foundation of Oklahoma was set up especially for rural areas and rural counties. The Community uh, Cherokee Strip Foundation began in Enid, but they also serve as rural communities. Uh, Kingfisher has a community fund with the Community Foundation of Oklahoma, and the Oklahoma City Community Foundation was established in 1969, a half century ago, and the Oklahoma City Community Foundation has 1.2 billion in endowed funds. And I think people are, many people are aware of those legacy funds and that, you know, that's why the Oklahoma City Foundation has 1.2 billion dollars. Um, we also saw here in Hennessy, I think we've had some very substantial gifts. The Copa John gift, that, that amounted, there were four, four farms, oil, oil mineral rights, and windmill rights. And I don't know how much that amounted to, but it has to be millions. We also saw the donation to the chapel, the chapel by an anonymous donor. Going back some years ago, there was the Snyder Fund. Um, I know that the Lotman Memorial Clock, um, I think, is a good example because many times in a legacy fund, a donor is trying to honor honor their town or their college or whatever. In, a, in this case, Mr. Lott, I, don't, I never met Mr. Lott. I don't know who he is, who he was, but he must have been a very fine gentleman for for that clock. And if you look at the base, the donors are listed. That is, that is a perfect example of a legacy program. Another perfect example are those bricks at the uh, Roy Cashin Monument with people's names on it. You give a brick and they cite you and there's also at the school. Um, Our street lighting project with the old antique type lamps mm -hmm. was done through donations. Donations. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Bill Cameron did both mm -hmm. the, the clock, clock and, and the, mm -hmm. the street lights. Yeah. And Bert, we had talked about it, and we both got busy, Christmas hit, mm -hmm. and uh, you always got funerals to contend with. You, you talked about getting together and pushing this. Yeah, my, my, and you mentioned in here the when you brought it up in 2013 about promotion and advertising. You know, from a legal standpoint, the town can't pay to advertise that. But what I was hoping to be able to do was through some private funds, be able to get something out to people. Um, and Richard, I, 
I totally agree with you on this. I, there's no disagreement from me whatsoever on the importance of this. Uh, I am certainly not an expert in getting that out, and, and, and I don't know how we do that, but I would be willing to do what I can to try to help get that word out, uh, to let people know, because uh, you're right, a lot, of, a lot of good things have been accomplished through donated money. Yeah, uh, this legacy program as I said before, is a herky-jerky process. You know, it's not going to be nice and even, right? Like each year we get another... Exactly, you know, for sure. You may go through some year or years where nothing happens, and then all of a sudden, maybe a Mr. Coker John or an anonymous donor appears. But we've got many, many projects listed on that from the planning committee. And we, we could do a cemetery fund, a parks fund, things like that. And it will, it, these legacy programs are designed to, to pick up on somebody's uh, emotional button. Exactly. And, it, well, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we need to get some money coming in. I mean, that's the main. That's the first goal, correct? Yeah. To get a fund established I would be and then build on that. I would be brutally honest with people saying we have no money and we're getting started. Yeah. And this is what But I guess I guess my question that and maybe maybe some of you all have some insight on this, is how do we go about promoting it? What is our steps? What what can we do? And I you know, we're on the town's agenda, and this really can't be a town project, but, you know, what what can others do outside of it being town funds to help promote? You know, I, I don't know if that's getting letters out to, you know, we talked about that. We mm -hmm. talked about getting a list of email addresses um, to let people know that that this is available. Nearly every funeral we do, we have a memorial fund to something. Mm -hmm. A church, a hospice, um, mm -hmm. sometimes it's the library, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't think people are thinking along the lines of the legacy program, but we need to put that on their minds so that, so what that I'd like they to, do think about that. What I'd like to do, Bert, is get together as we talked, the two of us, and then come back into the town council with some recommendations. I think it's like the planning committee. There are so many things we just can't talk about. We can't do the planning committee that we just recently have in a town council meeting. Well, and I, but I don't, Richard. I don't think we can bring it back to the board to spend five hundred or thousand dollars to yeah. get that out. But I mean, I I'm assuming the board could give its blessings, kind of like we are for the car show. That, that's what I'm looking for, Bert. As a town council, we can say there is a legacy giving program. We want to make you aware of it. And this is why we're asking you to consider this in your will or your trust. Mm -hmm. All of Yes. I, I want to interrupt, but I, I, have, I have some things that might help this, because this has been I know this has been your dream for a very, very long time, and I but feel Jack, like... it's not my dream. Well, many, no, but... Many communities are doing this. I understand that. Mm -hmm. I think, and, and I, I agree with you, this, this needs to happen, but it seems like we're running in a circle. And this is just my opinion, is that I think you should self-appoint yourself as the foundation administrator, like the... Give yourself a title. You know, it's not a board thing. This is a Richard thing. You're the the town foundation administrator, and then you need to form a little committee that you work with, three or four people. Um, you raise a little bit of money. But you don't need millions. You just need a couple yeah. thousand dollars to advertise to develop your whatever you're going to do, and then you have to develop your targets. People aren't going to give money just cause. They're not going to give money to fix potholes. 
They will give money to fix the library. They will give money to support the, the parks. They will give money to support the, the um, cemetery. cemetery. Um, then promote those four or five items. Now, my experience has been, has been when people start figuring out, oh, well, there's a library fund, and oh, there's a cemetery fund. Well, what about the church lawn fund? And I think after you kind of start promoting this, these little projects that you have that you want, would like people to give money to, more will pop up. It's just right now, no one really gets how, how a foundation works and how beneficial it could be. So that's just my take is, you need to be the administrator of this thing. You need to get yourself a committee. You need to raise just a little bit of money um, and then develop four or five little targets of things that you can promote. And I, I will help create marketing materials, brochures, a flyer, whatever you need, and then uh, promote those. Get out and talk about them. Send out, you know, build your mailing list and, and just start moving. Just do it. Let's, let's go do it. I'll be on the committee. Yeah. But um, I just feel that um, you know more about this than anyone. You know how it works. I don't know how well the legal part of it works, but you do. So, you know, if we're taking a vote, I would appoint you. <laughs> I would appoint you the foundation, the town foundation administrator. And um, I would yeah, get a better name. I would be more than happy to do that yeah. on one condition. What's that? It's endorsed by the town council. As we've learned, though, Richard, through all of our meetings that we had with the group from Enid that came down and spoke with us, you need a project. You have to have. Well, I don't think that's the problem. I mean, I realize a lot of people have their own little project. Well, we hope they come forward too. Mm -hmm. But just like but a golden just like, eagle, just like when the golden eagles meet. You remember that, right? Mm -hmm. There's a selected group that you can talk to right then. To me, the problem is not having a project. So I'd go to that planning committee and say, here's what we need. You know, We had the planning committee. What are our priorities? Is it putting restrooms at the, at the uh, chapel, at the cemetery chapel? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I gotta disagree. You gotta have a target. You can't you can't shoot an arrow up in the air and hope it hits something. You gotta shoot it at something. Because me, I'd rather, I would give more money to to a project than I would. Hey, can you just give me five hundred dollars? Yeah. You yeah. don't ask for money. Well, if you, yeah. Yeah. which sounds hypocritical. Yeah. But even if you ask me for my time, I'd rather give it to a project than say, Hey, will you help me anytime I need it? Yeah. I think if you had a brochure, um, you know, listing projects, the Coca John thing came clear out of the blue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Clear out of the that blue. Was totally. Out of and and those will, you yes. know, I think. But once people people don't get it, they don't they don't really know what it is and and how that works. And mm -hmm. and even in Bert's professional situation. I've been through a dozen funerals where I'll be sitting there and or making funeral arrangements and people are thinking on right there what to do with the extra money. Well, if people understand that these foundations are there, they can make those plans years before. And so it's earmarked. So by the time they make the call to Burke to make arrangements, that money is already earmarked to go to the, you know, the parks or wherever library where it's going to go. I think it's a, a top of mind issue, um, not an issue, but it's it's just flat marketing. People just need to know what's available and that they can they can pick something of their own if they have a chunk of money they want to put towards something. You know, they could. You know, I don't know what it would be a, a, a clock for the other end of the town or something, but um, a monument or something. But um, well, in, in generally, it would be things that that are supported by the town budget. Sure. The idea is to free money right. out of the town budget for other things, mm -hmm. for amenities or for increased employee 
wages. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think it's a fabulous way to, yeah. to, to keep yeah. money in the coffers yeah. but still get these things done. Yeah. I, I don't think one person should say, this is a project. <laughs> you know, you say you need a project. Yeah, but I think I if you form your committee, Richard, I think the topics would rise very quickly. What the need yeah, is, I think, I th and I think you're, I think you're right yeah. about that. And I really Richard, I, I agree with with Jack. Um, you have a passion for this, and uh, and I feel like that you should head it up. I, I mean. I, you've got more done. I hate to say it because we all have 24 hours a day, but I think you have more time to I devote have a lot of time than I do. I'd like to put it to you. <laughs> uh, the, uh, I don't know the legalities, and we could we would have to find out if the town could endorse it. Okay. You said you want the town's endorsement. I'm looking. For I know some. we could certainly give you the attaboy like we did Tony while ago on the yeah, car that's, show. That's what I was going to bring up. And, uh, and uh, I'm one member on here and I have no more power than the rest of you all, mm -hmm. but I, w I would be totally in favor of you heading that up and, and, and the town giving you the blessings to do that because it, it, like I said, well, Jack said it first, it's your passion. It's yeah. important to you, and it, and it does need to be important. Mm -hmm. I'm not downplaying that one bit. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I, I just feel like as a town government, we've got to be careful what lines we cross. Mm -hmm. And I know spending money <laughs> on that is not one of them that we can legally cross. Mm -hmm. But I think you can raise some money for that. I think so. And I I would personally help somewhat with mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, to try so to get I. it kicked mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I, I mean, I, I think you've made a good point. I don't want you to, you know, I, you, you say in your handout here that in 2013 you were met with hostility. Um, I wish you didn't feel like you were met with hostility. I, I kind of think what was happening was more of, from a legal standpoint, this is what we can and can't do. That doesn't mean that we can't work together and make it happen. And if, if that makes sense, okay. I mean... From my perspective, when a new idea is in, introduced, and this is not a new idea, mm -hmm. rather than automatically rejecting it, to ask some questions. Well, you've got a new idea. Mm -hmm. Who's done this before? Right. And did it's been very any, successful. Did they have any success at it? Yeah, and they have. Questions like that. <laughs> yeah, they have. And I didn't get that. Yeah. I didn't get that. Yeah, I understand. And Tiffany, I have reasons for the things I do. That's my response. But, um, but anyway, okay. I think, well, have you got any, anything else you want to no, that's it. pursue on that? Mm -hmm. um, okay, we're down to new business. Anybody have any new, new business? Citizens comments? You guys gonna talk? Anybody got anything? No? Um, I forgot to add in my administrative report the Howdy Truck Plaza. Mm -hmm. um, their building permit was approved. Um, they are going to proceed. Um, we're going to get um, the engineers to finish up the uh, to finish up the plans for the water sewer and the streets and um, get. Get DEQ approval, and then they will go ahead and do the. We'll get an agreement with them on the whole um, reimbursement thingy that we talked about at the last meeting. Okay. Oh, that's great news. So, 
The bank approved it. You're a banker. Or you were very good at chasing down, was it Ringwood that did a similar financing? Yes. You cited it down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, I wanted good. to pass that along. That's a perfect example of thinking outside the box to get, because when I saw that $500,000 quote, I was like, what are we going to do? And so I'm glad you... Yeah. And they also told me, um, and Harold was there, um, that when we wondered how they were going to get so many, you know, how they were coming up with their figures, um, they... They've done traffic counts, and so they're basing it off of traffic counts from 81, 51. Can they so. get us a stoplight with those counts? <laughs> There's quite a few cars that numbers. travel. They're, they're pretty big numbers, aren't they, Harold? <laughs> so. Okay. So our traffic's going to increase then? It, yeah, it probably but, will. Okay. And of course, we ought to get some more sales tax money off of it, too, because... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, everything that... And I, I guess we're citizens, we can comment. <laughs> but everything that's going on, I think it's going to really help us with our sales tax, the, the plaza, the, the Dollar Tree, Dollar Store thing, and... Well, and they're going to put in that, and then they're going to work on also a maintenance because they want it to be a full service. So, like, then after that, they're going to work on a truck maintenance place so that, um, like, trucks that stop there, they will be able to have also a truck maintenance place. So, or the next place, the next thing that will happen up there will probably be a... Car shop. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did you find out about what Ringwood did? I'm just curious. And um, Noda. Noda. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good. Okay. Council person reports. Richard, do you have anything? Well, I'm sitting here thinking about a small project. I think I don't, I'm not going to choose a project. We'll set up a committee and do that. But a small project might be something like that old tower at Tennessee Park. They're already getting estimates on that. Getting estimates? <laughs> yes, the, 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 the town boys, they're already, okay. they're already working on that. Okay, well, thank so. you. Thank you. <laughs> so. Tiffany, I want to thank you for uh, working today on doing stuff, getting that all form addition resolved. Uh, I really appreciate what you did today. And thanks for the town boys for stepping up. So, means a lot to the town of Hennessy that they saved $120,000 or more. They asked me if they could have that $120,000. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I told them I'd give them breakfast and lunch. Well, you got anything? I really enjoyed the, the five-hour meeting that we had Saturday, and I think we really got a lot accomplished on that, and a lot of things came out of it. I just wanted to be able to see some like next year you know what did we accomplish for 2022 did did we just have a meeting to have a meeting which nobody wants but then in 23 we can look back at 22 and said we got two of the three of these things in the five-year plan done you know and so i'm not to pat ourselves on the back or break our arm or anything like that but I, i'm really glad that we have a a base of it and now I'll be able to see where we go and, and take care of. And I really like how our employees really got together and made a good plan. Mm -hmm. I think Tiffany, you've done a lot to push community development less and I appreciate that very much, the grants and uh, I want to repeat myself for pushing us to go to Oklahoma City to the OML meetings and things. I yeah, I'm looking right. forward to the next one. Pardon? I'm looking forward to the next one. Well, September. Was, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think it was marvelous bringing in, uh, what's her name? Vicky from Noda. I thought, uh, uh, I thought that was just a great idea. Mm -hmm. just yeah, I was just wondering, is it possible to put 
the, all the handouts that from various departments uh, on the town board uh, were to be publicly accessible. On oh, the on the website? Website, yeah. Yeah, I can get with Angie and we can get those. If, if we got a legacy committee going, Jack will be a big part of that. <laughs> You could refer people to look at that list and see if they want to pick out a project. Um, I, I would just like to kind of reiterate what's been said about the planning meeting Saturday. Uh, for me, time went really quickly, and I you know, when I looked up at the clock and realized what time it is, it didn't seem like we'd been there that long because a lot of good points were made. I was particularly, the, the one thing that stands out in my, my perspective more than any was how much effort our employees put in and they are not just looking at the pothole that's here today, or the water leak that's here today but looking down the road of what we're going to need in the future, and wow, I mean, that's just phenomenal. They just, they just blew me away with, with what they've done, and Tiffany, you as well, and, and all of you, it's, it's, it was amazing. But I was, I was really expecting by the end of the day that I'd be really tired of sitting and be one of the kid fidgety, but things just went so smoothly and were so interesting at one that point. So it was good. And I really feel like Hennessy's moving in a, in a good direction. I really do. And, uh, and I think we should all be very proud of that fact. It's our hometown. And you know, Kurt, looking at that planning committee, I kind of brought this up and I said it wrong. We have all these projects, I won't call them issues or negatives, but we have all these things to do. But Hennessy has done a lot. I would, you know, I would point to the water park, for example, and other things. And I thought maybe we should have a list of what's already been done. Mm -hmm. Walking trail at Bullfoot. Uh, Bullfoot. A lot of things have a lot of things have been done over the years. Yeah. And, and infrastructure improvements that are so very important, they can't get but people don't get to see because it's all buried, you know, all over our water lines. And, mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Anything else? Barb, is Tennessee United going to put on, are they talking about putting on a community? I hope so. Yes, that was my plan. Okay. Can you check with them? If not, then yes. Okay. We can maybe work together and do that. Okay. A community what? A community. Have more community input. Oh. Like a yeah. community needs. Yes. That would be very good. If nothing else, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Jesus. Roll call. Cliff. Yes. Bert. Yes. Harold. Yes. Richard. No, I'm having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> you might be having a good time by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you said Saturday, too. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys.